Balanka le amogela ka o fela ko gae to another exciting episode ya raising babies 101 as i've said before ye ke show ya lena batswadi le bana ba lona re tlo le thusa as you navigate this challenging road ya go khudisa bana ba lena ka tsela e sentle re teng go social media so let's connect chat and share remember ke show ya lena i'm just here to give it to you le bitsola ka ke carol ofori without wasting any more time let's jump straight into it ga re keneng ka Coming up on today's show, Resheba di Rista, who said data, kapo ho draga, ngwana waka ho kadikari. We ask when is the right time to introduce your baby to your partner and talk all things asthma. Then, Rita Bridula Fati, li yami mami, Brenda Ndamo. Now, I don't understand how it gets to a point where Mutswadi is so desperate that they end up drugging or sedating their little one. Welcome my guests in studio as well as our wonderful studio audience, Kiale Amogel. Now with us, more studio is baby sleeping consultant, Pietro Tam. Yes, that's a job title, if no satsibi, and EMS representative, Ndate Robert Mlaudzi. Welcome everyone and thank you for being on the show. I want to understand why parents would resort to something like this. Uh, Petra, what is your thoughts on that? I think one word is desperation. Mm. Sleep is so important for our mental well-being that if a child um, is, is prohibiting the mother from getting enough rest, mm. I think they just they are so desperate that they will do anything. Yeah, anything. Now, Tunsukutli say in here, Ndadem uh, Laudzi, how about anything? But why do you have done some crazy things? and want to calm down. What have you seen in EMS? Maybe 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 scarcity, so 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 it's our role. Let's start saving our wealth, Alan. So when I run the beach, I see emergency services, certainly multiplying this one. So what would you say are some good tips, Pietro? In 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 how or not it's time for the child to sleep, but as a parent, this child will not sleep. What are some tips to mm. get a baby to sleep? Well, I think first of don't give medication unnecessarily. Mm. Um, I think ask for help. Mm. Know that you need help and ask for help. So mm. rely on your support structure, ask your partner to help out. Yeah. Um, there's no shame in saying that you need sleep. It's, yes. a, it's a basic human need. So if you're struggling, get help. There is help out there Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Well, I know my studio audience is very keen on this topic. So let's find out from you, ma'am. What is your question on this topic? The baby got heart problem. So I want to know, can you give him some painkillers? To sleep or to be calm? Uh, 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 for me, I wouldn't say, I, I, I wouldn't recommend or I'm fair uh, because if I only uh, had problems, depending on the, the medication and then I working, the side effects of happening, depending on the mutuena, can I go eating? Yeah, can I go on a one, I'll link a coyona, who was a halankayena. So now, nah, from uh, emergency services point of view, I wouldn't okay. advise yeah, or a fair and because the 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 Aholo in, in our communities uh this thing Iba Mwana ba ba to Iba close a hole of our share in such a way or Iba some kind of a drug. I hear you, I hear yeah. you. So I guess the bottom line is rather consult a medical practitioner yes. with regards to your unique case. That would be the best way to answer this. Mm -hmm. But as a takeout that we can take and 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 and, and use in, in situations, your 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 gift your final pearls of wisdom with regards to this topic. Mm. Most importantly, sleep is influenced by so many things. In most cases, it's not a medical problem. Mm -hmm. So look at it from a holistic point of view. 
nutrition, sensory integration, routine, um, is the baby getting enough sleep, your environment. So there's so many things that has an influence. Mm -hmm. um, so my best advice would be look at it from that perspective. Don't just believe everything that you read online mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, take every facet of the baby's life and just kind of see where is the little nugget that I'm missing because all children can't sleep. That is the truth. They are not born bad sleepers. Yes. You can actually help them to sleep better in natural ways that you don't need to medicate them. Okay. Well, today, it's very important to understand there's lots of things that affect the sleep patterns. And jumping and using the painkiller does not help but actually make the situation worse. Thank you to my guests for joining me on this topic. Now it's time that you decide as we unpack when is the right time to introduce your baby to your new partner. <laughs> now you decide when is the right time to introduce your baby to a new partner. When is the right time? We went out onto the streets and asked parents and caregivers to decide. Harshebe. We introduce a partner and I am done in one can be three months. I will tell him a month later. I think um, after six months. Because can't be so shallow and lazy. So we better be very patient. Then tell you that I'm a such a person. And when we meet, we say, "Hey, this is what I was good." Because there's a possibility we to go through an effort, yeah. So unje, I mean, is an introduction to the name. Unje, must have to talk an effort partner layo unje. I want him to know that I've got kids. So if he wants me, let's say for instance he wants us to go out, then I won't have excuses. So I'm babysitting or whatnot. But I would tell him that I've got kids the first time we meet, then introduce him a month later. In fact, there is no right time to introduce mutu aumu paniba because banana sometimes they tend to be very sensitive. We put them over sap like we put them over something that they were born. When I offer banana, then we do the fast, we go low, we born, and then mutu o watla acha ke ba mutu aile before. Very interesting. Studio audience, do you agree or disagree with what we're burning more screening more? I personally agree, like for introducing one to a partner mm -hmm. at an early stage, a horror, because you wouldn't know her relationship with Lisa mm guy. -hmm. So I would think maybe a year or, yeah, a year a should year. be a right time. Okay. At least well, you know the person. Yes. Well, joining me in studio is Mzamo Mbuli, a clinical psychologist, and Boidumelo Buikuzo, registered psychological counselor, who will be giving us the 411 on this particular topic. I think I'll start with you, Buidumelo. This is quite a contentious one. One year, too long, or too <laughs> short? Arbel. Um, you know what, I think the time frame is not necessarily the most important thing. Mm -hmm. What's important is the nature of the relationship you have with your partner. Okay. So I like what one of the ladies said in the insert that first things first is that you touch base with your partner, letting them know that you have children or exactly. a child. First date. First date, Lord. like yes. straight up this is, this is who I am, this is what I entail. Mm -hmm. I've got a child, I've got children, how do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. um, and normally, you know, you can engage from there that, okay, this person's open because they've got children of their own, yes. or um, this person's open because, you know, it's fine, you've got children, um, how do you feel about it? You know, do you see yourself integrating, you, you know, with my children? Mm -hmm. um, so really gauging what your partner's thoughts and feelings um, are around you having children. Yes. And if they're open to then kind of you know, join in in terms of, yeah, yes. um, bringing them up. So, Mzamo Foba, Nabone, this uh, whole process, Yahu Tibisaba, Na Motomuncha, what is it like for Bone when you are doing this process, Libon? It's a very good process, it's very necessary. Mm -hmm. But the baby, let's say the child is zero to six months, mm -hmm. 
before they form strong relationship with other people, mm -hmm. they must first form a relationship with the primary caregiver. Now, in our context of South Africa, the mother is not necessarily the primary caregiver because she's not there most of the time. Yeah. It might be uncle, aunt, whoever. Yeah. Whoever does that, maybe a period after six months, then you can start introducing other people. Mm. No, never mind um, the partner. Secondly... So um, you're saying Horanako eight twenty two in Genki six months before Utibisa Wana Mutuahao? Because then they first need to form a strong relationship with you first. Uh -huh. Because it's not just about, yes, you have a relationship, but to form a strong relationship with an attachment, rather, yeah. with your child, it's, it's good for their developmental skills, their language, and so forth. So before they, anyth they learn anything about relationships, they learn it first from yeah. you. Got you. So now we've decided, Jorge, uh, you're going to tell Wanaka how or Nalimoto or how. How do you tell Wanaka Jorge? Kiyomo to Gamorata, and this is what's happening. How do you do it? Okay. So I think depending on the child's age. Mm. Okay. Let's say we're dealing with a toddler of about maybe two to three years old. Yeah. Um, I think the nice thing there is then you you keep on incorporating that you know there's an uncle smang mang or there's an auntie smang mang. You know. Okay. So speak so about that person. Auntie. Yes. So oh, okay. so where's mommy going today? Oh no, I'm just gonna have a cup of coffee with um, Uncle Sbu. Okay. Um, you know, and, and and all those type and of things. And it's like what about like Uncle Sbu? Because sometimes about to have a cup and But and that's a problem because at the end of the day, we know how to be in your life for how long at the end of the day. Exactly. So now if you quickly box that person and the next minute after well, my six, seven months, that person's gone, meaning the next sipo hai okay nang mo pelomba how ke papa hape. Do you understand that it, it causes again what mm. um uh, he was saying earlier on in terms of attachments? Mm. You know, you don't you don't want to kind of you know steer that away from having a, a good, secure, healthy attachment. I got you. And now mm. another thing, I can't so to be sitting on a horn, no key or mutuak, Dilo had a break. Ubla Juan on a horn, I'm no longer limuto. Sure. So, so I would call it double divorce for the child mm. because mm. the fact that you're introducing this new person, it means there was a previous person, which was, for, for example, the mm. child's biological father. Mm. Before you introduce even the first person, mm. You need to understand that that's why attachment theory is important. Okay. Where your child is with the first partner, have they gotten over the separation between you as a parent and the biological father? Mm. We are there in terms of that even before you introduce a new person. Mm. And like she said earlier on, before you introduce somebody, what type of relationship do you have with a partner? Absolutely. Is it are you just dating for the sake of dating? Mm. This, is, this is what I'm doing. Are you actually going somewhere with this uh, person? Exactly. Is, yeah. is it commitment? Yeah. So you have to look at look at look at look at those variables. Mm. So as we wrap it up, can you give us the tips? together. So some final tips from both of you. Um, I would say for me, like I said, first things first, establish the nature of your relationship with your partner. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure there's a firm and solid foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to the child, mention the partner's name ever so often before they physically meet, uh -huh. so that they get used to the idea. Hore, there is this friend of my mom's or this friend of my father's you know and then one important thing as well as when they do meet make sure it's a very you know calm and, and, and very informal setup you know so there's a play area so they can interact and mingle no I, I totally agree in terms of introducing it should be a gradual process not a mm -hmm. uh, this is my partner how, how do you feel about them no this is uncle mang mang it can be a bri a uh, very social context. So you can also see how your partner is with, with your children in a social context. Mm -hmm. Gradual integration, because with children, what they need best is, is structure and mm -hmm. consistency. Absolutely. So if you just not, so all of a sudden, hey, this is Mang Mang, disrupts the child's own, own process. Yeah, Yo, then, we don't even have enough time to continue this discussion. Thank you so much to my guests for giving us some nice input on what we have to do. Now we'll continue the conversation. Go Facebook, go like Twitter, as well as on Instagram. Make sure umple lohor, what is your decision? Because at the end of the day, this segment is about you. You decide. Salah Leruna Riet. Cecilia Delang to save a choking baby, chatting asthma, Liami Mami Brenda Mdambo joins us later in the show.
Kya le amogela ga pemo raising babies 101. A choking baby can put you in a panic, especially how sa tsebe gore o etsang. Choking is when a child a khamega and cannot breathe because dijo, a toy or another object is blocking the throat or the windpipe. Today's easy peasy, we found out exactly what to do in this very emergency situation. <laughs> In today's Easy Peasy, I am joined by Ndate Robert Mlaudzi from EMS Service, and he's going to demonstrate to us how to save a choking baby. Dumela Ndate Legai. Dumela Karol, Leo Obama, Leo Obama, Leo Obama, Television, Kwai. So, most of the time, how are you going to get out of here? But what do you want to get out of here? I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. Is that right? Yes, I'm going to get out of here. What's your name? I'm going to get out of here, but I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. Si pati owar nota wa aliso. Okay. Awan so nturi yeta re re lika re ewe ya ibe ibule ile like this. So kuru kunka fela lito la how o try re agri mo mula lingwa usanza nuli huli hunyani o na like usanza nuli soft. So abatu mo khaula o mo roba mula la jalo jalo. So tanga lito la how o lika re kuru pati eka fela kwa le sfasha usai and then lito le la high le. So quite a lot, learning go. Yeah, like this. Again, on the other side, handle the mona. Yeah, it's cool, eh? Na le maybe le babu ko la pe. Banana or gumkunzi mulo mara. Ntu ki yeta mungu ubula this party ay. Agere rezamo. Okay, so mulo ubu tsi. Kuru mula ewe ya ha. Yeah. Okay. So we're trying to open up this party. Okay, so remember. Ewe ewe ya ha. Yeah. So abonu or gumkunzi juang. So ota munga mwana umete. So kuru mauto ha ya toba in between. It's all a house. Yes, but remember, do not block the <coughs> nose and mouth passage, correct? Yes. Yeah. And then, agree more with the fellow who hono, just hono muswar. Yeah. yeah. And then from there, more na utlo mushapa high five. Hi, hanya na ubapa liwi mo juano. One mushapa strong. One, two, three, four, five. Ose bisa this party. Ube bisa party. Yeah, auri. Razi mo rekwa na how. Ra ra utusi sa rekwa na. You don't go like. Because I get into it, but I get into it, into killing it, yeah. So how is the one, two, three, four, five, and then all the time I get it. Why how about this base? Because only the how could could ask how. Aha, how much more sharp? Eh, eh, could I will be the the balance more fast as long as all the time I'm going to suck him, I'm going to suck him. So this this thing, okay, it's on a kneeling position, and then from there I'm I'm going to suck him more chesting your eye. I want to make this thing happen. When I leave this party, I carry a rib cage. I'm going to refill it. I'm just going to refill it. So I'm going to make it two, and then I press it. I press it. We did the chest thrust. Three five, three five. Yeah. So give one, two, three, four, five. Flip over. One, two, three, four, five. Exactly. Okay. Just like that. So how much is the jewel? When I put the bullet out, the objective is clear. And then if we are alone, we are not unconscious while you're doing that. Because only a possibility or again we are unconscious. So we don't be in this position in a on a hard surface. Okay. I come to come move the more better or matras. Jolo jolo. Because in a. Change up and move fast. Yeah, move fast. Move fast. So what you do is we don't try to tilt this part here. Okay. Yeah, because we are now you are not a doctor or a nurse or a paramedic. Uto shaka fela the easy way ya how ya urukono bonari mwana wa hema urweza la what do you do you look here at the chest chest must so kika waza like a demonstration if you blow a mu then chest ya ito rise you see that I want so so for when a lay person uto shaka fela uruna le that movement and a happy urukono uto urukono uto la muzi so you the the way how uto la mu and then have push away on the other side. Okay. Okay, so Riboni and Dr. Bonsitze, who are the best way to do this, make sure that the object that is not right for one of stay clear and away from that. If this happens, turn the baby onto the stomach at least five times and ask for medical attention. Thank you once again, Dr. Mlaut. Thank you. It's time now for our baby shower giveaway. Okay, Mubuhedi, as you have seen, Huhudi Sabana can be a very, very costly affair. To make life a little easier for you, segment Ena, ya baby shower, Gihuhutusa, that's on a dimpo.
This week, we have a baby hamper voucher to give away. All you need to do is answer yes or no to one very simple question correctly. When babies are choking, do you hit them on the back of the head hard? To enter this competition, Hubunolo, where now set one it's Osiete, Kiko answer this question yes or no most social media platforms. Answer correctly, and one lucky viewer will randomly be selected to win a baby hamper voucher valued at 1,000 Rand. The winner will be announced on our social media. Best of luck. Morajo Khadipapato, we answer today's big question, which is getting your toddler to stop sleeping. Mobiti. Yeah. Welcome back. If you're joining us now, Untule Kai, huh? Oscar Tsengeha, you're just in time for the big question, Yarona. Are you exhausted and not comfortable in your own bed because your toddler has taken over your bed and your private time with your partner? I know all about that. We are joined by Fazia Sedat from Lesnesia in the south of Josie. And she has a big question. We took time to meet her and her son, and this is her dilemma. Harashem. Hi, Raising Babies. My name is Faiza Sirat and I live in the south of Johannesburg. I am a proud mom of two kids. This is my four-year-old son, Daniel. He is energetic, bubbly and an extrovert by daytime, but in, at night, the monster comes out. As a parent, I think we face many challenges. My most recent challenge has been having to transition my son into his own bedroom at night. Daniel has a bit of an issue sleeping in his own bedroom. We've recently moved to a new home wherein I made an entire new bedroom for him. New linen, new furniture, everything. Nothing seems to be helping. Some way, he always finds himself coming back or crawling back into my bed. We've tried adjusting or using a night light to provide him extra comfort. We've tried using monster spray to banish all the monsters from the closet. We've tried uh, incentivizing him by using a reward chart for each night that he slept an entire night on his own, but nothing seems to be working. Raising babies, please offer some assistance as to what I can do to help transition my four-year-old into his own bedroom without having any fears or nightmares. Thank you. I know all about that. You can post all your questions on our social media platforms and we will do our best to answer them. Joining me again is Pietra Tam from Goodnight Baby. She's a sleeping consultant and has got tons of experience when it comes to training your toddler to sleep alone. Now, Pietra, tell us, how do you get this process started? <laughs> it's a pity they don't come with an off switch, isn't it? <laughs> um, I think with toddlers, what people need to understand is that sleep is a discipline. Mm. So, um, as as much as, as children have a million reasons why they don't want to be in bed and they don't want to sleep, we always look at the wrong things. Mm. So, for example, this mom mentioned a nightlight. So, it's for us, it's simple. We think, you know, they're afraid of the dark, let's keep the light on. Mm. But there's, for example, a hormone called melatonin mm. that is produced um, and that makes us sleepy and it's inhibited by something like a nightlight. Mm -hmm. So nightlight stops it from actually exactly. coming on. Exactly. So that, for one, is something that they can so stop using is a, is a nightlight per se. Okay. Um, she mentioned a reward chart as well. Okay. And I think it's a good start uh, for, for some children, especially toddlers. But it's important to remember that the, there should be consequence and reward. Uh -huh. So if we talk discipline and we say sleep is a discipline, then we need to look at what rewards can we put in place, like she mentioned, an incentive, but also what consequence is there? If you don't go. If you don't. Uh -huh. Because they're old enough at four, five, even three to understand that they should be staying in their in beds. In their own bed. Okay, we've got a question from our studio audience. Uh, what if one, one bedroom for mm. like a kaya? Mm. Because you don't have any other plan. Yes. Because you got one, one bed. bedroom. So um, what would you say is the situation? There's a lot of us, a lot of our viewers watching at home who are in a situation where it's only one bedroom, one bed, and the babies will just get used to being in that situation. What happens when they get older and so on? What's mm. your advice? Well, I think, first of all, don't think that it's, it's a bad thing. Mm. Um, in a lot of cultures and in a lot of studies, it's actually proven that sleeping together is a good thing. Mm. So there's no right or wrong when it gets to parenting. Mm. Um, but if you're in one bedroom, one bed, 
well, first of all, remember that babies and children and toddlers need um, a lot more sleep than we do. Yes. So they need about 11 to 12 hours of sleep. So they need to go to bed a little earlier wow. than mm. us. And secondly, um, be careful with what you do when you get to bed. We spoke about the melatonin and the light earlier. And things like cell phones and TV screens actually also in inhibit that hormone. That's a good point. Uh, so don't lie in bed and, and try and watch a, a TV program right before, before the time. It might influence their sleep as well. Uh -huh. Are there any exercises? that one can do and practice before bedtime to try and calm the baby down and get the baby to a point of feeling drowsy and to sleep? Yeah, I think routine is very important. Mm -hmm. um, it's, the, it's the key word when you talk about sleep, um, is that sleep and bedtime routine. Mm -hmm. And especially with toddlers, they feel very comfortable with a predictability. Mm -hmm. If they know that step one is this, step two is this, step three is this and step four is sleeping, then they feel safe. Mm -hmm. Because remember, sleep sleep is the most vulnerable state to be in. Mm. And for toddlers, it could be quite daunting, especially when they've always been used to mommy and now they've moved to another bed or they're moving out of the room. But if they have that predictability of first this, then this, then this, mm. it just makes them more comfortable. So always do a kind of routine. So let's say, for example, bath, uh, we read a story, we, you know, whatever you, you do go. in terms of your routine, yeah. and just keep that predictable. Absolutely. Now what happens when you have that toddler that's like, I am not sleeping today, I am losing my mind, and tantrums come on just before sleep time what do parents do then you know what is better for them yes so you don't need to scold or hit or do anything funny just stick to to the plan if, um, and if the in the plan is seven o'clock is bedtime and you sleep in your bed then stick to that and have that consequence and reward I, I know an, I make it sound simple it's, <laughs> yes. it's not necessarily is there an age where you say okay Nana no more to your bed yeah I think in my, you know, obviously sleep is, is a passion of mine. So I always think from birth, sleep should be a priority. There's no certain age. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, there's no age where it should be child in another room. Mm -hmm. um, it's a parent's personal choice and really mm -hmm. what works for a family. Now, for some parents, this routine might be, you know, jerked a bit or, you know, sidelined because they work late or they're not always present uh, and the routine might be affected. How do you continue to give your child routine, even if you're not always there, mm. to see this routine through? Mm. I think the thing is life happens. Mm. Um, and what works for your family might not work for mine. Yeah. So it's finding that balance and also seeing what works in your family. So even if, for example, it's a, a grandmother or a father that's doing the routine and not the mother, there's no problem. Just stick to it as much as you can, as often as you can. And then the one or two days where it's, you know, going haywire and it's just not happening, it's fine. It's not going to make or break a situation. All righty. And the last tip of advice you have for us? I think one tip that I can give is an early bedtime. Mm -hmm. I think it's the biggest mistake parents make is putting their children to bed too late. And a good bedtime for us in South Africa with our light, et cetera, is about seven o'clock, between seven and eight o'clock, which nice. seems early. Thank you so much, Petra, for the insight. We really learned a lot today. After the break, we decode the letter A and examine one of the most common chronic diseases, asthma, or that litse ding harhutla. Raising Babies 101. In Babies Health A to Z, our letter for the day is A for asthma. Take a look at this. Asthma is a chronic lung disorder that causes airways to become inflamed, which means that they swell and produce lots of thick mucus. The muscles surrounding the airways also tend to tighten, which makes the already clogged airways even narrower. This results in asthma symptoms which can include coughing, wheezing and shortness of breath. In a person with asthma, the airways are overly sensitive to certain things that can trigger or bring on asthma symptoms. People with asthma often find that their symptoms come and go. Joining us for more insight on the subject matter is Dr. Sinabo Vilagazi, who is a clinician. Welcome, doctor. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sishan. Explain asthma, king asthma. Um, putting it in layman terms, without going into the uh, clinical aspect of mm. things, um, asthma is basically blocking up of um, the tubes um, that feed into the lungs mm. that help you and I to breathe. Mm. And the sad part is, Guti, it is not only confined to old people, mm. but kids at time. That's to exactly where to I wanted to go it. with it. Yeah, yeah. with so, kids. So it's not confined just to um, adults. Yes. Yeah. Specifically with kids, mm. when can kids get asthma? 
Uh, and are you born with it? Uh, some are actually born with it. Um, mm. If you look into the genetic history of the families, mm. um, and at times it can develop um, as you get older, and it can be triggered by certain things such as dust, mold, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. So I mean, there's no specific time frame to say, "Hey, now um, you are." more susceptible mm. to getting asthma. How do you see it? I don't know about seeing it, mm. but um, you'll see Ngane specifically um, struggling to breathe, breathing heavily. Mm -hmm. And obviously one ought to take into account as well, Uti, Breathing heavily does not necessarily translate to asthma because you can't find good to your child's got a chest infection, whatever the case may be, but that does not necessarily mean Nguti Ingane has asthma. However, it is of pinnacle importance, Uti Azuma or Anyubaba for that matter, because it's 50-50. There's no such a thing, Uti Umaba must deal with Ingane. Take the child to the clinic mm -hmm. or to the general practitioner and, and so forth and so forth. To test. So as to decipher Uti what exactly is happening to Ingane. I mean, they will run um, peak exploratory tests to see Uti Ingane perform Laganjani, how are the lung feels, and, and so forth. So that, that that's how um, one would ought to know how um, or whether Wittingan has got asthma or not. What do parents do should an emergency happen where the child loses breath and goes has an, has an asthma attack? Okay, the number one, I always implore any parent, even if you're not a parent, to get your first aid first and foremost, okay? So as to decipher Wutti, Pulse, check your pulse, seeing any. How is the pulse rate? Is it um, exacerbated? Is it out of hand? Is it suppressed? And so forth. So that's how one would sort of decide what if this is actually emergent or not. Mm. And at times with thing and um, because they're struggling to breathe, some some kids tend to uh, go hypoxic. Uh, hypoxia would be you not getting sufficient oxygen mm. um, inside your, your body, so the child will most likely turn blue mm. and there won't be um, the usual cell. So it's just the little signs, Uti, you ought to be paying attention to Inganeyako. Mm. But emergencies don't delay. Take the child to an emergency room as a matter of urgency, because yeah. you never know. Because with asthma, um, with other people, um, it's got a tendency to be transferred or transformed to an even higher um, worse state of asthma. If not treated. Known, yeah, known as status epilepticus, where you basically, your airways, they shut down completely. <sighs> so that is a true, true, true medical emergency. You need yes. to be in that emergency room as in yesterday. Is there a particular age group in children where asthma is prevalent? Um, between uh, one and six, mm. however, like I said, um, there's no specific time frame, but I mean, looking at research specifically, um, you find a lot of asthma, um, mm. especially in those age groups. I mean, I had asthma at that um, age as well. Mm. So around that age group, between one and six, is mm. where you should be looking for those minute things in an inyak. Is it possible Wurmuti can outgrow asthma? Well, there are people who actually have outgrown it. Hey, I'm here. Okay. I'm here. So uh, it, it is possible? Um, it is possible. Well, I'm, I'm a test case. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, don't, I can't speak for other people. Mm -hmm. But I mean, also, if you look and you follow up history, Wurmuti, you'll see it actually growing up. This is where you were. But now we don't have to give you any medication uh, to circumvent the effects of the, your asthma that you had at that specific period. So I would say, uh, speaking about me specifically, I have a grown it. Mm -hmm. Treatment options, Harashaba, like traditional ways mm -hmm. as well as your medical ways, what are the treatment options for asthma? Well, for me, um, I'm going to go purely medical. Um, you need to see a clinician. Um, you'll be given appropriate medication um, and they will give you medication according to the severity of your asthma. Because, I mean, there are people who need to be on like salbutamol or Vintees. I mean, it's different strengths of um, steroids in that pump that help to sort of open the air so that you can breathe um, normally again. You did say you stay clear of traditional medicines, but is there any traditional medicine still carrying horabatu paskadi Don't go near it. Um, one, don't mix uh, traditional and Western medicine because of drug interactions, uh -huh. which could 
make you better or in some cases make you even worse. And you could find yourself in ICU because we don't know what is in the traditional medicine and it's not tested mm. uh, by the Medical Research Council or the, the Medicine Control Council for that matter. So one ought to be very, very um, careful not to mix traditional uh, medicine with um, Western medicine, so to speak, because of those drug interaction. Because one ought to remember that at the end of the day, mm. even though you say it's traditional, it's natural, mm. when you mix it with medication, you are creating a chemical reaction and that could be detrimental to one in the long run. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your final words for Badzadi Bashebile Kohai? Pay uh, attention to change um, in behavior of the child. So, and also in the same breath, make sure Wuti, you wash the sheets at least twice a week. Mm. Um, you clean the floors like no one's business, and like scrub it proper, proper, proper. <laughs> so um, dust is an issue. So eh? dust is an issue, like allergens on the outside. I mean, change in temperature, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, if your child does have asthma, do yourself the favor of speaking to a clinician to say, hey. I'm leaving now um, high, at, um, high altitude area to a low altitude area, and you're like from Joburg to Durban, and the humidity will most likely affect that child. Thank you so much, doctor, for that insight thank on you. asthma. Thank and you, now thank I you. know who are going to ask you to ask you to ask you to ask you to you to ask you to ask you to ask Thank you, thank you very much. Cecil Atelang, our yummy mommy jazz sensation, Brenda Mdambo. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, more Raising Babies 101. Nze Pili, and this is our final installment, Yalena Neho Larona. Guest Yarona Elatalang hails from KZN and has been singing ever since she can remember. I also heard something very interesting, so I'm privy to this tidbit of info without her knowledge, and she might strangle me for this, but a little birdie sang Mutsebenyaka and told me that she has a twin within the industry. I say this because I believe that she and actress Dumul Njali were born on the same day on the same year, but Haifelimo at the same hospital. Can you believe it? Our yummy mommy Wakajeru is the golden voice of jazz, Brenda Dambo. Please help me welcome her. Welcome, Brenda, to the Thank show. You. And Thank you so uh, much for having me. Absolutely. One thing I love about uh, your journey with mm. motherhood is that Ritu, Rilera Babo met at the same time. Eish, yes. Yeah, what a coincidence. Exactly. <laughs> so, this journey, Yahuba Me, what has it been like for you? Ooh, it's been ups, downs, challenges, mm. you know, joys, you know, it's been mixed emotion. Like, I can't actually say it be happy pay like or been done, but it's beautiful to be a mom, mm -hmm. you know. But at first, I was so terrified. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't know what to do with the baby. Like, oh my God, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be mom, I'm gonna be a mother. Mm -hmm. But my say figure I think that's where then everything then started to overwhelm me. I was so overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. I was so overwhelmed because I didn't know anything about um, a kid, you know, a kaya being a kabandwana. In Babugayo or anything like that. So, and I didn't go footy, you know, with the classes that I went there before. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any of those. So, mm -hmm. I just went on and had a baby. And then, Master Saka Pigum Dan, and look, yeah, it was challenging. But I got a, you know, a fundelo about mama, like, Nga bonan jenam singi, say, was saying swinger with it. Eh, swinger yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been very vocal, Horan Tatua Kohai, and he's been very hands on with being a dad. Mm -hmm. How has the teamwork been going? It's going good. Uh, it's going good. Uh, I think if you're a mom, you need a lot of support. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I feel blessed in that regard that even now I could have just given me a tela today, you know, mm -hmm. he's at home with uh, uh, Ugo, you know, mm -hmm. so I have a lot of support structure in terms of uh, and also my family and also just my close friends, you know, they really support me a lot. The fact, you have to leave baby sometimes because you have to go and do your career. Can I tell you something? Hey. I've never left my baby. How like, do you do it? I've heard the thing of like, I'm not going to leave him. I take him with me. I remember when I was nominated for Metros, I took him with me. I like, everyone is going to KZN, we're going to KZN because I can't, I was going to be there working. I was going to hey. do a, a, a lot of things that side. So I, I had to leave a week earlier. Uh -huh. So I was like, mm-mm. 
I'm taking my baby with me. Wow. Even it, it, when he was born, I took him with me. In studio, I would take him with me. Is he here today? Not today. He's not here. <laughs> we got you today. <laughs> not today. Okay. It was my first time letting him go and How was visit. That? It, it's hard. Listen, the other day I was feeling so emotional. Like I miss my baby. You know, I feel like I was calling them and I felt like they're, they're getting irritated. They would say, "Oh, lo mama lo, leave the phone." Mm. But I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, then I'm like, "What could it mean?" Mm. I raised him myself. I didn't have a nanny. Mm. I raised him myself. So when he's away, I, I, he had never been away. It's the first time at two years that I'm away from him for like a week. Wow. Okay. So it must be very <laughs> difficult for you. Very difficult. We have an audience question. Let's find out what our audience want to ask you. Mwana is gona gore batho ba bantu re na le this theory ya gore e ya ngwana sa go ba le ke mimoya e nna le eng re laite di mpepo re tshise di mpepo so wena khopa jwa le ngwana sa go ba Nice question that's very challenging because also their grandmothers you know I remember when Mina I I gave birth mm -hmm. they were like my grandmother mm -hmm. and my son's grandmother mm -hmm. so it was like everyone is saying a lot of things like those things yeah me now personally I, d i don't believe in those things mm. so i wanted to raise umdana according to my own beliefs uh -huh. not according to what i heard mm -hmm. i didn't use anything i went to the doctor and he, he, he told me it's colic you know so oh. i bought those colic drops yes. yes so i will use that or just don't sleep if mm. it, if, if it's crying so make oh, you know, I, I would do that. I never did anything of him by na 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 na. Even a man, she okoko saying to me, "Um, dada, she said, 'Lo anga anga zin, niyama zai.' You know, something like that. I like it, okoko. Please, because I'm, with all due respect, um, dada, I believe what you must raise um, dada according to where and yeah. your beliefs and unga mm. inga impose everything else that always why unga pain like you know you yeah. must do what works for you if you feel like in paper or whatever works then do that for you Mina uh, I I didn't know how or even where to get those things <laughs> <laughs> we have another question from our studio audience nke lukubuza ukuthi ne umani nja kanjani ku career yakho ne family yakho especially uma umntwana anga khona anga kulala ende kusasa ufanele uvuke emsebenzini you know i think as women we have that strength, man. We can just do anything. Mm. I remember when I was recording my album, I didn't have, I was, it's me, my partner, and my child. Mm. So he goes to work, I have a child. I'm like, what do I do? Do I postpone my album? Do I, no, what do mm. I do? I take the baby with me. I go in studio and I record an album. Wow. You know, if I'm tired, I have to grab coffee, whatever. You do whatever that you have to do to raise kids. Like, I, I feel like we have that strength, you know. I didn't realize that I had that strength. Until you had but your until baby. Until I had a baby. I hear you. Actually, it's strong, you know. I can not sleep and wake up at 5 or I'll be uh, uh, from a gig. I arrive at home at 2 a.m. 5 a.m., mm. the child is saying, Mommy... What is your parenting style? I mean, we have different ways of, of parenting. What would you say is yours? I mean, I let a kid be. I want my kid to grow up and be himself. Mm. I, don't, I don't impose myself mm. on my child. Like, I, I didn't... A friend of mine was saying to me, I, I must train the kid, you know, you know, all these things. I'm like, mm -mm, I don't want to do that. I want my kid to grow up and be himself. Gifuna akabang kuti. Or maybe I can take this thing and do this. I don't know. I train him to, you know, to don't do that. Don't do this. Don't, don't do, do that. that. I don't do that. Like okay. I allow you, and then I to tell you, it's okay. Uh, uh, don't do that. It's okay, but or sometimes I allow him to get a girl. Mm. It's okay. Allow if you get a la, you allow him. So I go and see next time around. So I think Gomzali, I allow my kid to be. Gam um gam ya girl and funa bo yena. You know, Gifuna Benje Umtano Wuye without me imposing myself on him. Do you have any tips as we wrap up for uh, moms at home and dads at home that you think you can share with us in making this parenting journey easier? I think it's very important for men to understand that women, as much as we carry the kid and all these things, we need their support. Mm. We need support, basically. We need also, as a mom, you need to say, yes, I'm tired. Can you please help me? Mm -hmm. It's something that I I I I'm mm -hmm. You know, young tone, I get depressed at some point. According to it, really, you know, depression because I'm tired. I'm this. I'm that. Mm -hmm. You know, all those I need things. help. And I don't. I I'm a superwoman as well. You know, in my head, mm -hmm. I go, okay, I can do it. I can do it. But my advice will be, if you can get help, get help. 
if you have a partner and he's there, your partner needs to support you as well, you know? Mm. And also as a mom, get time for yourself. Yes, get you time. need mommy time. Yes. You need get yummy time mommy for time. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much, Brenda, Thank for coming you. in Thank and you. sharing all this. Thank you so much. Wow. So, Rukwi Lechechur, being a mother or a father is a very difficult job, but that is why Runamo Raising Babies 101 really day. That's it for today. For me, Carol Lafori, have a great one. Thank you again to my guests, our wonderful studio audience. Harar Hopule Hore, Harar Tlokomele Banabarona, Karre Banabarona, Kibokamo Sobarona. For me, Carol Lafori, until next week. Welcome to Pep Talk, the parent's guide to everything to do with raising your kids. There is nothing cuter than a sleeping baby, and this also means that moms and dads can have a nap too. Today I'll be giving you a few do's and don'ts when it comes to putting your little one to bed. I'll also be offering some fun options for sleepwear for infants and toddlers. Let's start off with what you can and absolutely cannot do when it comes to putting your infant to bed. Don't use loose pajamas for your baby. Do opt for tighter pajamas or baby grows to avoid suffocation. Don't place your baby on their tummy to get them to sleep. Do place them on their side or on their back. Another option is swaddling your baby. Swaddling is snugly wrapping a newborn in a warm blanket for warmth and security. It can keep your baby from being disturbed by his or her own stirs. Baby's comfort is important, especially during sleep, and more especially if mom or dad want to get enough sleep for themselves. These baby grows are perfect for summer nights to keep your baby cool and comfortable throughout the night. For toddlers, you can get these comfortable pajamas, which are also perfect for those summer nights and come in different designs that your little one will absolutely love. Catch us next time right here on Pep Talk for more from Pep for you and your little one. If you want to stand a chance to win with Pep, get onto our social media pages quick and enter our weekly competition. You'll stand a chance to win some awesome prizes. See you next time. <laughs>